Hey everyone, my name is Tony and welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm going to show you how to build a brick wall with Profile Builder and we'll take a look at some important settings that everyone should know. Let's dive in. So this is the model we're going to use for this exercise. We're going to create a brick wall around the perimeter of this residence. I'm going to use the line tool and draw a continuous line that's going to serve as the path for our wall. And to create our wall, I've created a couple of components. Here we have a full brick, which is seven by seven and 14 inches in length. Next, we have a half brick version of that. And then we have this next component, which I'm going to refer to as a spacer. And a spacer is basically a dummy component that's going to help guide the actual bricks. If you take a closer look, you can see that the spacer is in its own layer so that we can easily turn it on and off. And there's simply three edges, as you can see, the red, blue and green. If you're not able to see it this way, simply go into your styles, edit and change your edge color by material. So this is what we're going to use to guide the bricks. And another thing all these components have in common is that the component axis is set on the bottom right corner. And with this setup, we should be able to start building our wall. So let's open the assembly dialog and we're going to start by creating a new assembly. So let's call it brick wall. We're going to the components tab and we're going to add a new component. We're going to call this course one spacer. Next, we're going to pick our model. So select the spacer component. And although it's very small, you can see it here on the preview. And that's for the settings. Let's change the spacing to 14 inches. Uncheck max and change the layout from start. So for now, we're going to leave the rest of the settings as they are, but let's build our assembly so we can actually have a preview. Select the outline and click on build along path. And for now, all we're going to see is the spacers because that's all we have in our assembly. So let's go back and add an actual brick. And instead of adding it as a component, we're going to add it as a span. In the case of our wall has a span, the brick will repeat itself before reaching the next corner or junction. Keep in mind, you don't necessarily need to assign a component to the spacer, but adding one can be helpful because it acts as a guide for the placement of the bricks. And I'm also going to activate live edit assembly, which will allow us to make changes to the assembly and get automatic updates. So you can select and right click on the assembly, go to profile builder and select live edit assembly, or as a shortcut, you can double click on apply assembly attributes. So let's go ahead and add our brick as a span. I'm going to select component and we're going to call this course one bricks. Next, select the brick component. And right away, you'll notice the automatic update on our assembly. As for the setting, leave has is. But looking closer at our assembly, we can see that the bricks behaving as it's supposed to. But at the junctions or corners, we get these weird intersections. And that's where we're going to need the half brick. Keep in mind the left and right corner bricks apply only on turns greater than 60 degrees, which is a default for junctions. So the advanced junction settings are very important. So now let's go to the components tab and we're going to add a new component and we'll call this course one half brick. We're going to pick our component. So now you can see that half brick is already in our assembly. Now for the next step, this is where the infill options come in very handy. We're going to uncheck every option with the exception of placement at right junction which means this brick is only going to appear at every right corner and once that's done you can see that the brick is perfectly in place as an example let's build on an assembly and you can see that every right corner that brick will be in place 
So now that we fixed the right corner or junction, you can see that we're having the same issue at the left junction. So we need to fix that next. So let's repeat this workflow and add half a brick on the left junction. So click use advance and we'll add seven inch to pre left and post left junction setback. This is going to clear the space for the brick. So now I can go back to my component and make a copy of my course one half brick and we'll change the info option to the left junction. Notice how it's not in place. So go back to the settings and change the rotation to 90 degrees. And to stay organized, I'm going to properly rename my components. This is going to be course one half break left and the other one course one half break right. This is going to make it easy to see the visibility of each brick. Now, before we start the second course of bricks, I'm going to add gaps to create a similar effect to my reference. So if we go to our course one bricks, we're going to adjust the start and end setbacks. So if you want to create a staggered brick effect, simply add a quarter inch. This is ultimately going to create a half an inch gap between the bricks. However, I'm going to add two inches to create a four inch gap so I can end up with this type of effect. So let's update. I'm also going to add the assembly to a curved path so you can see how it behaves when there are no 90 degree corners. And this is actually much easier to create since you don't have to adjust any junction settings. And this is the final result that I'm looking to achieve. So for our second course, let's set live assembly update. Let's copy course one spacer and call it course two. We're going to give this a vertical offset of 7.5 inches. So our spacer sits on the very top. Next, we'll go into spam and duplicate course one brick. And this is what we're going to call course two brick. And we'll change the support to course two spacer. And we easily get our second course. Notice how the bricks are stacked right on top of each other. So we need to go to components and change the start setback to seven inches. So the bricks shift to the right. And now we got that proper staggered effect. Now, before we continue, let's add a first brick to our second course. Let's copy our course one half brick and we'll give it an up down offset of 7.5 inches. So everything lines up. I'll change the name to course two first brick. And for the infill, select the second option. So the brick only appears at the start of the path. And make sure to clear every other option. And if we want to try to match that four inch gap, we can just adjust the starting setback to minus two inches. So it moves further to the other side. Now, before we fix any junctions, we can go over to our curved wall example. I'm going to select all of these curves and apply our brick. And as you can see, it doesn't look too bad from this point. All we have to do is stack these on top of each other to one foot three inches and duplicate that to give it a proper height. So let's I will multiply this by eight and we get something like this. Once again, this is a very simple and easy example where you don't have to deal with junction and corners. But if you look closer at our second course, the corners still need to be adjusted. So let's go back and fix these last couple of settings. A couple of things to look over while the bricks are staggered on top of each other here. That doesn't happen on this end or on other ends. And because we need to stack corner pieces, we need to create the space for those unique corner bricks. So in your course two spacer settings, adjust your advanced junctions and change the pre and post left junction to 14 inches. So that's one foot, two inches. So this not only shifts these bricks to the left, but also creates a space for the corner piece. And to shift these bricks to the right, all we need to do is add seven inches to pre and post right junction. And that takes care of our shift. 
So this is the component we're going to add on our right turn for course two. Make sure the axis is set to this corner. So let's select our assembly, activate live update, and we're going to create a new component. Call it course two right corner. And we're going to select our component. For the info option, select everything but the right corner. I'll set the up down set back to 7.5 inches and you should get that right in place and for our left corner brick we'll create a copy of this component we're going to rename this the left corner and this is the axis for this component here on the outer corner let's rename to left brick select our brick component and change the infill option so it only shows up on the left junctions. You also want to change the rotation to 90 degrees, but I'll correct the up down offset to 7.5 inches. And with those adjustments, the brick should fall right into place. And with those final adjustments, we have a fully functional wall that can turn left and right and that you can use on a curved path to create some very interesting designs. So this is a very simple exercise for you to get used to profile builder settings. And if you followed along, make sure to save this to your profile builder assemblies so you can use it in your next project. And that's gonna be all for this video. Hopefully you can see that building a brick wall with profile builder has more benefits than doing with the native SketchUp tools. So leave a comment down below on the video and a comment with the most liked will be turned into a video or a reel. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And I'll catch you guys in the next video.